Hi, welcome to Tiger Bite. It's Monday, the 23rd of August. Uh, Jay, a lot of comments over the weekend about yeah. a number of topics. That's right, Tim. Uh, I'm going to start off by talking about something that I get a lot of emails about, and it's not just us. A lot of media gets sent a lot of emails mm -hmm. about a drug called ivermectin. Okay. And this has been going on for like the last year. It's mm -hmm. basically a drug to treat parasites. Okay. But there's been some people on the uh, internet who've decided they're going to push it as a drug for, uh, for COVID-19. Okay. And they've quoted different studies and there are a few sort of rogue doctors that have got behind this. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also been a few limited studies about if its effectiveness. Uh, we've been accused as a media organisation of uh, limiting our discussion about this topic. We actually have published some uh, some stories about this ivermectin in the past. But uh, even the New York Times over the weekend has jumped on the bandwagon and then they've said health officials warn people not to treat COVID with a drug meant for livestock. It is basically a veterinary drug to control parasites. And so people saying that we are just promoting big pharma by not discussing ivermectin Whoever these people are who are, one of them's called Stephen K, who sends me an email every single day. But I get two or three other emails about this drug uh, almost every day as well. Okay. The only people pushing drugs are these people pushing this ivermectin. It's not us. And it's nothing to do. We have, as I said, published information about it. We've spoken about it briefly on, uh, on some of our programs on our YouTube channel. So that is about all I'm going to say about that particular drug. Over to you. Right, Tim. Uh, now, I've got a few lighthearted comments here. Uh, my first comment today is from John, who says, Tim, you should get the two shingles shots after the current episode ends. Now, I'm, I'm guessing John's uh, last episode, you uh, said that um, you did have a case of shingles. Still have. You do. And uh, so have you gotten your two shingles shots? Uh, well, OK, so about the shingle shot. So I went down to <clears throat> Bangkok Hospital on Saturday and said I'd like to have the shingles vaccine. And uh, it's a two vaccine uh, situation, but I can't have it for four to six months after my current bout. So I'm booked in for, I think, December the 18th. I said I want it at least a week before Christmas. So, uh, yeah, I am going to get the shingles vaccine. There are two vaccines available for it. And the one that's available in Thailand is an older vaccine. Okay. If I went back to Australia or if I went to, uh, to the US, I'd be able to get this newer one. But apparently the older one is, uh, is very effective. Oh. So I'll tell you all about it in December. Um, let me go on to my second comment. Uh, I have a comment here regarding the... So one of the pictures we showed in our Only in Thailand segment last Friday was a picture of a restaurant selling black chicken. Oh, the black chicken, yeah. yes. So, I mean, we showed the picture because, you know, if you don't know anything about it um, and you looked at the menu, you'd be like, what is a black chicken? Is it burnt? Is it black? But actually, we had a lot of responses sure. regarding the black chicken. So my first comment is from someone called Achu. I'm, Achu? Achu, as in sneezing, Achoo. yes. And Achu says... The black skin chickens are naturally black. They are special chickens cooked specifically for medicinal purposes in Asian cultures. And um, Bruno Winter uh, further commented, uh, giving a little bit more information. He said, thank you for the pictures, only in Thailand. Black chickens, also called as Ayam Semani, are a special species of chicken and you find them in the northeast of Thailand. It is a genetic trade that makes most of the chickens black. So this is real, not fake. I believe a lot of the other comments also said that the chicken meat as well and everything is black. So yeah, that was referring to the black chicken. I had, I, I've never tried Ayam Samani. I, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to visit uh, parts uh, northeast of Thailand. So I, we don't really find that in the uh, south of Thailand or Bangkok. Have you ever had black chicken? No, never had black chicken. Okay, well. But I'll look out for it now. Yep. All right, so uh, just another, this is another general comment. Okay. And this is directed to a video which we released on Saturday. It was called China, the need for speed. And it was basically a short mini documentary, which was about uh, three areas in which uh, China has in the past decade, like leapt ahead in some ways from the West. 
and I thought they were like almost reasonably untold stories that I thought were interesting. But a lot of people jumped on the, the bandwagon and said, you're obviously being paid by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, you're a shill for a communist China. You're uh, anti the West. Uh, a lot of people saying completely untrue things, including that we've been paid to do the story. Can I say, once and for all, we were not paid to do that story, the need for speed. We thought it was interesting. They also jumped onto the bandwagon about China and uh, Taiwan. This is a, another video which we're going to be making in the next couple of weeks about this situation in Taiwan, a rather tenuous situation that the island finds itself in uh, and the battle that may be looming over the technology that's on Taiwan. But that's another video on another day. Can I say once and for all, we have received no payments from anybody in China in fact, we've received no payments from anybody to make that particular video. You either like it or you don't, but don't say that we're pro-China or anti-China. It was just presented as a video about three different types of technology we thought you might be interested in. If you're not, that's fine. That's another general comment. Right, Tim. Um, I have a comment here from Topu Rahman who says, I have arrived in Maldives yesterday and what a relief from COVID. I can move around freely without fear. Things are under absolute control here. Next week I shall be in a resort island looking forward to that. Sense of freedom is so enjoyable. Now we actually get a lot of comments here, you know, calling Phuket Sandbox a scam, saying that Thailand tourism is going down and rightfully so a lot of people are finding alternatives to uh, holiday destinations um, other than Thailand because you know the Thai government has there's a lot of hoops that you need to jump through to finally come here spend a lot of money so I guess um, regarding Topu's comment here if I was Topu I would probably do the same if I could go to Maldives and have you know uh, the beach experience and sunny weather and well you can have the beach experience here exactly but if I don't have to jump through all those hoops and go to a place like Maldives uh, what would you do? Yeah, look, I agree. I think uh, at the moment the Thai government says we're open, we want the tourists to return, but they're currently making it very difficult. There's a lot of paperwork to go through. <clears throat> the people who say that they've come here, they've had a great time. Yep. I, I don't think anybody said they've had a shocking time here. Yep. A few people have had to go and do an enforced uh, quarantine, which they weren't expecting to do, but they knew that before they came here. But otherwise, uh, yeah, I think... The Thai government at some stage and probably fairly quickly is going to have to loosen up some of this paperwork. Yeah. Uh, but you've also got a situation now across the country where the numbers of new daily cases is starting to come down. That's right. I think we are going to see a relaxation of some restrictions, especially in the dark red zones, places like Bangkok. They're talking about reintroducing flights from Phuket to Bangkok, mm -hmm. maybe only for sandboxes, but maybe for the general population. We won't know until next week. But at the same time, Phuket has now had more than 100 people reporting uh, as new COVID cases each day for the past three days. And the number over the past week is well in excess of 600 new cases. Yep. And for a small island like Phuket, whether the public health office wants to admit it or not, that is going to, well, cause some consternation and some, uh, some long conversations, I think. So I get what he's saying. Yeah. If I had the choice of, if I was a tourist going to Maldives or Thailand at the moment, I'd go to the Maldives. Yeah. Um, I have another comment here from Bumblebee, uh, which kind of relates to Topu's comment as well. He says, one thing the, th the Thai government is experts at is making things as complicated as possible for foreigners. Now, Bumblebee, I'd also like to let you know that the Thai people feel the same way as well. Like a lot of my Thai friends, a lot of my Thai colleagues have the same complaints. Like it's not like it's any better for them, even when they go deal with the government officials and um, you know, do things locally, they find the system as complicated as the foreigners do. And maybe it's more difficult for us because it's sometimes it's really difficult to communicate with the government officials. But it's been forever now that people have been complaining about how complicated people make the most simplest things. 
Yeah, ties love paperwork. We've, that's well documented. We've uh, made some stories about it before. And when it comes to COVID, you've got the battle, the ongoing battle between the tourism players, the mm-hmm. TAT, the operators, the hotel operators, the owners, the people who are invested in all that. And then you've also got the public health imperative to try and control the situation. And what we've ended up with is uh, sort of somewhere in the middle. And it may not be ideal, but that's the current situation in Thailand. From Sandbar, who said, I would like to see a gender balance at the news desk at Good Morning Thailand. Appreciate both Tim and Jay's presentation. However, love to see a local Thai female presenter as well during the week. Also, daily weather presentation should include a map of Thailand. Well, all I can say is that, um, well, two things. Firstly, I am going to be taking a break from Good Morning Thailand, and uh, we are currently looking for a host to look after the show, if not for those two weeks, but maybe for uh, for ongoing. Uh, also, we've got the prospect of moving the program perhaps to Bangkok once the situation improves up there. So, uh, yeah, we will be looking for a uh, presenters for other new shows as well and of course we'd be delighted to have a female presenter join our team Uh, it's just that the female presenters we've had in the past are currently not available and uh, Jay is um, a male and I apologize for that but uh, it's not his fault can't do anything about it no well you could but preferably not I'm happy the way I am Uh, Mike B has also said, could we get mugs made with colourful designs, including Tim and Jay dressed as ladyboys? Oh, God. Alluding to perhaps the uh, the last comment. The answer is no. (laughs) What is this obsession with ladyboys? No, I don't know. (laughs) All right, to you. I'm I'm good. That's all the comments I have for today. So thank you for joining us uh, as I look to the wide camera. And we uh, will go back to more Tiger Bites during the week. And we'll get to more of your specific comments about different issues because I know you really want to hear about that, not about what we wear or about uh, female presenters and stuff. But uh, thank you for joining us today on Tiger Bites. Don't forget to comment on our YouTube page, on Tiger Talk at thetiger.com, also our Facebook page. And we randomly pick out comments that we're happy to present. And uh, we've got a subscription base too, where you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, you'll see that underneath. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.